The Morgan Report with David Morgan. Discover how to build and protect your wealth at themorganreport.com. David Morgan of themorganreport.com for the week ending 26 January 2024. Well, first up from TRT World, does China's nonstop gold purchase show shift away from U.S. dollar? I won't read it to you. It talks about how much uh, gold China has imported relative to uh, what they've been doing in the past, as I said, nonstop. They continue to buy gold. Does that mean they're exiting the dollar? The conclusion here is pretty easy to draw from this guy, and it's U.S. dollar foreign exchange reserves of China amount to no more than $3.2 trillion. Gold accounts for only about 4.3% of China's total reserves at the end of 2023. That remains a modest proportion. And all those numbers are his um, and what's in the public domain. We, we, me, many in the financial newsletter business think that uh, China's has far more than that, maybe a 12% holding, but it's very difficult to determine the absolute with China. But any move out of a dollar into gold is a move out of the dollar. And, you know, if it was, you know, 50% of their reserves in gold. But China's been pretty explicit on lowering their exposure to the dollar and increasing their exposure to gold. So my title might be somewhat different. A conclusion might be somewhat different. But uh, that's the first one up. Uh, this is from CNBC. UBS sees a 10% spike for gold this year as rate speculation swirls. Uh, that would be, you know, 10% on 2000 would be 200 so 2200 2300 gold in 2024. Uh, that's the low end of the range that we at the TMR forecast. We looked at, uh, that's kind of the bottom, we think 2500 this year. But, you know, that's with the exception of any black swan events, which is almost guaranteed, in my opinion, that we'll see at least one black swan this year. So, if that were to occur, the markets might react far higher than, let's say, $2,300, $2,400. This is moving to silver. This is very interesting. I've set this on many of our weekly perspectives from PB Magazine, Photovoltaic, Solars. And they have this projection with this chart here that <clears throat> Woodmac predicts strong yet flat global photovoltaic growth through 2032. And you can see again the, the this display here. We've had a huge increase in photovoltaics over the last few years, as you well know. And yet the projection to go flat for you know several years. True, false, who knows? It's probably a good projection. I did put this on my Twitter feed, and what I'm going to do on some of these articles that I report on, when I do these weekly perspectives, I think I'll move uh, the whole article to the Twitter account at silverguru22 my twitter account is at silverguru22 and that way for those that are interested go ahead and read the whole article and this one's probably worth reading um there is a huge demand for silver in photovoltaics but interesting that it may just taper off we'll have to see if that really manifests or not on the exact same topic from rave 36 gigawatts of new solar capacity in 2024 and 43 gigawatts of 2025. Doesn't go much beyond that. And we'll just have to wait and see again, but certainly a substantial amount of uh, silver increased uh, demand for photovoltaics and, and uh, it may flatten out, it may not. <clears throat> the new solar panels, by the way, as we've indicated on many of our recent lectures from primarily from Chen Lin and kind of the Oh, back and forth he had with the Silver Institute of these new panels use actually more silver than the old style. And there's a reason for that. They are more efficient. It's just that uh, per panel, you're getting a lot more uh, <clears throat> voltage out than you would from the previous design. I want to put this one up because we look at, you know, obviously the financial system, global economics, macro picture, the precious metals. All the resource stocks, all the resources, you know, cobalt, battery metals, etc. So this is interesting from Reuters. Tesla CEO Musk, Chinese EV firms will demolish rivals without trade barriers. Uh, <clears throat> this came out this week. Elon Musk said on Wednesday that Chinese automakers will demolish global rivals without trade barriers, underscoring the heat 
that U.S. electric vehicle market leaders face from the likes of BYD, who are racing to expand worldwide. Musk's comments come after Warren Buffett's backed BYD with its cheaper models and a more varied lineup, overtook Tesla as the world's top selling EV company last quarter. So some of you Tesla fans, I'm, I'm neutral on Tesla, frankly, but regardless of my opinion, uh, you in the EV market might take a look at this. Kind of an interesting article. And just to go out on a limb, in fact, all these metals, of course, go up and down in price. Uh, <clears throat> Nichols had a crash here. This is from the Straight Times. Nickel price crash seen strengthening Indonesia's grip on supply. I'll go ahead and post this to my Twitter account so you can go ahead and read it. So I moved over to my YouTube account and then I went to the community button and I am on that. And this is one I posted that I think everyone should pay attention to. It's uh, Tucker Carlson, like him or not. He does, a, I, in my opinion, does a great job of interviewing and he interviews this uh, <clears throat> Chinese scientist uh, on the facts about climate change. But they're going to a lot more than just that and um, talks a lot about fossil fuels, and really there's no such thing as fossil fuels, just hydrocarbons. Um, I would say it's a long interview, but I'd certainly recommend uh, if you have time this weekend, you listen to, to the whole thing, but at least the first half. I'm not sure. I think I mentioned this last week. Uh, I said anything from Whitney Webb is probably worth your time. This is uh, about a cyber attack, which, of course, we've been talking about for a very, very long time. And uh, it's my hypothesis that we will see a cyber attack of some type, probably not global, probably not U.S. wide, but significant um, sometime during 2024. It'll either be real or contrived, but one way or the other, I do expect to see that. So that's pretty much going to wrap it up. I'm back on our blog page. And that's how I got to our YouTube channel by clicking that button and then hitting the community button. I just finished a consultation downtown with a client, and it was interesting. We talked about a lot of things, but he said, well, you really haven't mentioned silver uh, very much in our discussion. I'm kind of surprised. And uh, when he brought up the fact he wanted a legacy investment, I said, well, wait a minute. Let's talk about that. <laughs> and my contention still, even though I'm probably one of the most biased on honest money and an honest financial system, Nonetheless, what's shaping up the silver market remains to be more and more interesting because of the photovoltaic demand and other demands in the industrial side. We are seeing more and more silver offtake every year. And with any kind of monetary issues going forward, which there will be many, you know, I think this demand for silver over the next decade will be very significant. So even if I'm wrong on timing, which looks like I have been, I expected far higher silver prices by now, I admit it. Um, going out 10 years and buying a commodity is important to the world as silver is at cost, meaning what it comes out of the ground for. In fact, at 23, you're actually buying it uh, under cost for some of the major silver miners, believe it or not. So we might have a slight storage problem. That's not much of a problem to have. Uh, and that's what I think. I think it's a great investment longer term. And just a couple more things before I finally wrap this up. I just want to remind everybody I'm still working on the documentary, Silver Sunrise. It's at silversunrise.tv. Uh, there's two trailers you can watch. Uh, you can contact us. I'm really not committing to responding to everybody that sends in an email with a critique, an idea, a question, or whatever, although so far I have. Uh, and... Um, this continues to grind ahead slowly, but I put more and more effort into it, obviously, and uh, really looking for a product that really helps helps humanity at large understand, you know, overcoming the fear and stress of money, basically. So that's still on track and in work. And I'm going to finish with a plug for Dirty Man. It's uh, dirtymansafe.com. Howard sent me one, and I want to thank him publicly for that. Uh, you can go to the website, which I'm on, showing you. There's reviews here you can watch on YouTube. And it's a pretty interesting concept. Uh, basically, you're burying uh, your valuables, and there's lots of things you can do besides precious metals. You know, your, your 12 words, your uh, cold storage wallet, um, 
you know, other important papers or whatever. But uh, I think it's a good, very good design, uh, very well made. Thank you again, Howard. If you're interested in uh, stashing your own medals, uh, this is one way to do it. And I think it's a really good way. I will say, you know, watch any of these videos. These top three pretty much show you what it's like. <clears throat> very high grade PVC. And it's a method to keep it very clean and, you know, in any environment. So it is dirtymansafe.com. Go to the reviews page and you can watch the videos if you're interested. So that's it. It's David Morgan from themorganreport.com signing out for another weekly perspective. What if I told you that you could go broke in less than 24 hours? That's how long it took for the Dow Jones Industrial Average to plunge by nearly 22%, losing investors billions overnight. The same happened to the FTX crypto exchange and Terra Luna stablecoin. Both crashed overnight, losing crypto investors billions. You need a strategy that will protect whatever amount of savings you have now. We are going to witness the greatest transfer of wealth that has ever occurred in recorded history, and you must understand the following. You can absolutely go broke in one day. We've been helping subscribers weather this economic mess for years. Now it's time for you to get the same insights. What really happens during a major collapse is that the wealth changes hands. You will actually benefit by looking ahead and knowing exactly how to build and preserve your wealth. Putting just 10% or 20% of your wealth into our approach could make all the difference in your financial security and peace of mind over the next few years. Discover The Morgan Report today. Visit our site at themorganreport.com.